project Dark Horse has done that's sort of outside of Joss's work since the comic book has been relaunched. He's really had a hand in everything else. Are you looking to do further projects like this? Well, no, we don't want to get away from what Joss is doing. That's why, um, that's why with this we wanted to set it in season eight. We wanted to get him to sign off on, on the creative team and on the plot and everything. Um, yeah, to me there's like, there's like three kind of compartments of, uh, of the Buffy stuff. There's the stuff we print in the omnibuses, which is um, totally unrelated to Joss. Joss mm -hmm. had very little hand in, very little influence over that stuff, um, you know, unfortunately. He, he wasn't involved in any of that stuff. Then the Tales of the Vampires, Tales of the Slayers books that we've already done, and this one here, <coughs> features other writers, other artists, with, with a lot of oversight from Joss, but not the same kind of oversight we're getting on season eight. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is, the Tales of the Vampires, Tales of the Slayers material is, um, is kind of that middle ground. It's a little freer. It's definitely pre-season, or not pre-season eight, so much as just outside of the, the, the plot direction of season eight. But it's still stuff that's close to Joss. I don't want to do any more Buffy work that doesn't have Joss's fingerprints on it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to stick. I want to stick to this, but uh, but this was something that Joss and I decided on when we realized that <clears throat> between the various writers and Georges, and just keeping this book at the quality that we're trying to keep it at, um, we can't crank it out every month. And we've we've come to the conclusion that we're we'd rather have every issue drawn by Georges, every issue of the season eight story drawn by Georges, and then. Well, the, well, two things. We want everything drawn by Georges, mm -hmm. and we don't want any more m months off like we did. I um, can't remember what it was, but there was one month we took off early in the run, like after issue five or before issue right. five, and then there was when we got late with issue 19. We don't want to do either of those two things, and we don't want Georges, we don't want any issues of the main story being drawn by anybody but Georges. Then he seemed to catch up. It seemed like a Buffy, Buffy book was coming out every three weeks for a couple of issues there. Yeah, for a couple of issues it was every yeah. three weeks. What, what happened basically was just um, Carl and Joss have this magic chemistry that, that slows the earth to a halt, <laughs> and um, between, between Joss getting very busy on Dollhouse and Carl with his speed, um, issue 19, really all that happened was issue 19 got really late. Mm -hmm. Issue 20 was, issue 20 took a long time to do, but that nearly would have come out on time if 19 hadn't been as late as it was. But yeah, 19 was just super late because of extenuating circumstances with that particular creative team. When 19 got late, before 19 was done, 21 was done, 22 was done, mm -hmm. then we finished 19, then we finished 20. So yeah, the best we could do, we talked about a lot of different plans about how to get back on track and we're still technically a month behind and we're just going to stay there. Like it, it, There was a plan at one point to do it every three weeks for like four months, which would catch us up completely. Mm -hmm. But that was a burden on retailers, that was screwing with their world, so we just decided that the goal was to get get the issues out quickly until we had an issue coming back out in the first week of the month and, and we're back in our first week of the month slot. But um, we did, yeah, we, we wanted to catch up, we wanted to make up for the lost time, but, um, but going every two or three weeks for a real extended period of time we thought would have just confused it. Yeah. Well, you're about halfway through the, the announced run for season eight. Mm -hmm. Is everything going pretty much as Joss originally planned, or is he sort of evolving the story as it goes along? He's definitely evolving it as it goes along. Like when 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 people talk about you know like uh, Dave Sims said that he had three hundred issues of Cerebus all yeah. worked out in advance. When when Lucas knew from the beginning what the whole arc of Star Wars was, I don't think that necessarily means that they have every line of dialogue in their heads. It means that they know where it starts, they know basically where it ends, and they know a lot of steps along the middle. Joss didn't necessarily know every step along the way, he just knew where he needed to get to and he would find where it needed to go. You know, so like we know how it ends. We know exactly what happens to the main characters at the end and we know the significant mileposts. But um but you know like the even the event with Harmony came up into the run a little bit. That wasn't one of the things that we had talked about at the very beginning. Um, in order to make the things happen that we need to have happen by the end of season eight 
Harmony doing what she did just seemed like a very, very good topical step, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I don't, I don't think I know. I didn't know about it from the get go. Um, there were big things like the the arc of Dawn's transformations was worked out from the get go. Like we knew, we knew what all of her steps were going to be, but we didn't know. Okay, and in issue twenty five, this is going to happen. Like we just knew that. Okay, somewhere along the way, all this is going to happen. Frankly, I was surprised that she did, you know, that is, she is hitting the stage that she's going to hit in issue 25. I thought it might take a little longer to get there. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've I, seen that cover from Joe Chan, and I have to say it's disturbing. The, yeah, it's yeah. a weird one. <laughs> did you, but it's tantalizing. I yeah, mean. that when we saw that one, we were just blown away. Um, yeah, I forgot what that one was. That, that one's incredibly gorgeous. And have you seen George's for that issue? Um, I haven't. No, I can't course. remember if George is out yet. Um, yeah, that kind of pulls together the, the mystery of what's going on. Um, you, you, when you see those two covers next to each other, I think you'll be very intrigued by what the hell's going to happen in twenty five. Um, but yeah, so the big the big steps were all worked out way ahead of time. But the details of this arc that we're doing right now, where it's a different mm -hmm. writer every issue, we knew there was going to be an arc like this. And we knew that a couple of the steps, like we knew about the issue that Doug's writing, would be somewhere in there. But what happened when it was time to start get going on that was Joss picked his writers. And then he said, okay, guys, here's the main beats we need to hit over this arc. Anybody want to call dibs on this one or this one? Mm -hmm. Doug, I know I want you to do this one. And any other ideas? We'd love, we, we definitely should do something with Faith and Giles in this arc. Who wants to do that? Okay, what do you want to do? And then, you know, so it was loose. The writers contribute a lot. You know, the writers, Joss has the milepost he needs to hit. When it's a writer like Goddard, the two of them are so tight that I think they just had dinner one night, and Joss was like, yeah, we got to get this done. And Drew's like, let's do Japan. Let's go to Japan. Okay, what do we do in Japan? Well, what if we do this? Okay, we're going to do Dracula, right? And they just, they brainstorm, and some of it Joss is bringing into the room mm -hmm. with them. Some of it they just figure out on the fly, and they just, you know. Well, one of the things I appreciate is that Joss isn't telling his guest writers, you can play with my toys and make sure they're back on the shelf where you left them. He's really letting them contribute to the overall story arc. Oh, so yeah. when their issue is done, you've advanced everything ahead to where he could pick it up and the story yeah. moves along. Yeah, things change. Um, that's one of the great things about Buffy from the beginning of the TV series. and. and <clears throat> it was it was one of the tough things about doing the comic was um, it, it's 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 still astounding to think about it but the production schedule for the comic was longer than the production schedule for the TV show so jo I could get a script from Fox and it would massively change something in the series before I could get a comic out mm -hmm. um, or while I was in the middle of a comic that was going to completely contradict it so. Oh look, um, Buffy's dead. Watch, yeah, watching the changes happen and trying to keep up with them in the comic was real rough. And now, but it was also one of the things that made me love the show. Yeah. So it's definitely one of the things I love about the comic that things are changing, things are shifting, yeah. and you're, you're going to see consequences for what's going on. Well, it's not a static story, that's for right. sure, which is really nice. Yeah, um, and that's one of the great things about everything he does. Are there plans or hopes to bring other series writers in as guest writers, or is he pretty much locked into the We've got it. We, we know what we're doing now through the end. Um, there's no, there's not going to be any more announcements like that. The the next time you'll hear news like that is when we announce what we're going to do in season nine, because um, we really don't know. Season nine could be shorter than mm -hmm. season eight. It could potentially be longer, though. That's pretty unlikely. Um, it could all be written by one writer. It could be all written by Joss or all written by somebody we haven't even worked with yet on the comics. Um, the uh, you know, we, we don't know who will be contributing to that. Mm -hmm. We don't know that we don't know if Georges will stick around. We don't know anything about season nine creatively because we really want to focus on season eight and then we want to enjoy a break. So it will be a hiatus between the seasons. It'll definitely be a hiatus, yeah. Hopefully not a long one, but we need to recharge our batteries and, and like regroup and everything. And and by then, you know, who knows how who knows what all he'll have going on mm -hmm. by the time we get there. 